Okay, let's continue the social engineering topic with the practical techniques and tools and let's see what we can do in here. So as the first step in every social engineering attack, you should reach your target. And one of the most important ways of reaching the target is via the email messages. So you have a great payload. You have a great, for example, weaponized docx file or Excel file or whatever payload that you have. So you have to give this to your target in, for example, in a red team operation or something like that. And for that reason, you're going to need some email spoofing tools and you need to create crafted emails or spoofed emails and send them to your targets in a red team operation. Not in pen tests because Due to my experience, we didn't have any social engineering attacks on penetration testing projects, but in every red team project, you're going to have at least one phishing assessment on your client. So you should know how to do that. There are a lot of tools for doing phishing campaigns or phishing attacks on the targets, but in here, we want to work with GoFish, which is an open source phishing framework written in Go language and is well maintained. So as the first step, let's go to the opt, create a directory called gofish-framework, let's say gofish-framework. So everything will all happen in here. We have to navigate to the website of gofish. So here's the website and the link is in the resources of this lecture. So https github.com slash gofish slash gofish slash releases. Or you can simply search, for example, gofish, download, and Google will get you here on the release page. So you see, I come here, I say download, and yeah. Gofish is super fantastic because it will do the SMTP configuration for you. It will do the website landing page configuration for you. It will check whether or not the target opened the email. And also at the same time, it can have various templates to use yeah, on various targets. For example, you can create a banking template. And by template, I mean landing website template and also email template. So when we run it and we send some emails, phishing emails in here, you're going to see and understand exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, let's continue to the download of, yeah, GoFish. So latest release and release 0.11. Let's go to the download and it's down here if you are on Kali Linux like me. So double get this address. So it will take some time and I've already downloaded for the purpose of saving time. But you pause the video and come back after you have downloaded this file. So sudo cp. We don't need sudo, I don't think so, but yeah, it depends on the permissions of opt. Mm. No, we don't. So let's do cp download gofish. And here's the file I've downloaded before capturing this lecture. So unzip this file. You see the gofish zip file is unzipped. So let's see. Oh, it's unzipped right here and you shouldn't do anything. You are just good to go. Just change the mood of GoFish file to be executable. Let's launch it. Permission denied because it wants to listen on port 80. Okay, let's clean the page. And the reason for that GoFish error is ports below 1024 are not going to be set up by non-super users, which means Python 3-M, which is invoking a module inside Python programming language. We want a module of HTTP server, which is a web server inside Python. And you see the port 23 is permission denied. But if I change this to port 24 with the same privileges, I'm able to run this yeah, web server on this port. So you see ports below 1024 are not going to be listened with a normal user access. But for the same port, yeah, if I use sudo or any other ports, I'm able to do the listening. Yeah, that's the reason you should launch this gofish with sudo or change the default port. 
you see the port 80 is here and you can change the configuration on yeah config.json you see the port 80 you see port quad 3 which is for the management and the database is SQLite 3 with the name of gofish.db and that's the configuration up to here you see the database is inside yeah it's right here file this one you see SQLite 3 and the database is right here so let's continue to the management port of gofish so you see yeah the certificate error which is fine let's continue and admin gofish is wrong so if you have any problems with with the gofish login so you see default gofish password so i think it was yeah admin gofish so let's type admin and gofish you see it's not working i don't know why but I reached this problem and I had to restart the password of user admin. So you see it is a SQLite database and we can manipulate that. So first run sudo apt install SQLite 3 and leave SQLite 3 dash dev. So if these packages are not installed, yeah, it is installed on me. And then we run SQLite 3, the database db. And then we have a query to run. So we say update users set hash is equal to, which is the hash for user gofish, which is this hash right here. And this command is in the resources of this lecture. You can use this full command to reset your password if there is a problem with it. I don't know why the default password is not working in this version. And this is the hash of, yeah, the password of gofish. And then we say where username is equal to admin so as simple as that the password is reset and we can continue with the password of gofish so update the password it says change the password i change it to password of password and yeah let's log out make sure the password is set update and we are cool we can continue so you see here is the dashboard of gofish phishing framework so as the name comes up, it is written in Go, and it's for phishing purposes. We have some configurations on the admin panel. We have the campaigns. So campaigns are every attack that you set up for your customer. And you can repeat the campaigns and do all the stuff in it. Users and groups, you can create groups of targets. So these are the targets that you want to send email to. You can give it a list of users with the format of CSV, and also, we have other configurations here. We have email templates. So how do you want your phishing email to be like? So you copy one email from your, for example, mail address, from your Gmail, from wherever you have a valid email template. And GoFish will grab the source of that email and then use it for your social engineering attacks. And then you have a landing page. Landing page is where the attack happens on your website. So for example, if you want to steal some credentials and stuff like that they will happen on the landing page and then you have sending profile which is for configuring your smtp service and it is really important so we have user management we have account setting and we don't want to get into them just explore it for yourself because it's not needed for now but sending profile is where everyone will have a problem so you see in here you should give it a profile so let's say smtp profile zero or let's call it yeah profile dash mail hog mail hog is the application i'm going to use as the smtp service in here so this is where you want your email to come from and it is really important so imagine that we want to hack or do social engineering on a company which is our client and we are authorized to test and it is called secure x company so this is the domain they have, SecureX company. I hope it's not real. So let's ping this address to see, yeah, it doesn't exist. So SecureX company is the company that we want to do assessment on. And we have a, for example, Red Team project. 
and I say security dash team at sign yeah securexcompany.com so this is the email address I want to spoof and send mails from and we have the host so for the host part you have two choices so you either set up your own SMTP service which is on your VPS or on your local host wherever it is it should have some configurations which are really important for making your emails or sent mails not land on the spam folder or on the junk folder so you can use your local configurations on the SMTP service for example with a service called Postfix so with the Postfix you can configure your SMTP service and do all the configurations that are needed for making an email not going to the spam but in here I want to introduce to you some easy peasy ways the first one is Mailgun Mailgun if you willing to pay we'll give you SMTP access with a lot of features so you see Mailgun is something that you should go for it has a free service sign up here with the information of yourself and then you get I think a free trial for you see get 500 free emails on us for three months and it has some limitations on the free trial but anyways if you are willing to pay for your projects it will give you a lot of options also at the same time there is another solution you can go to the name chip and buy a domain here so you see namechip.com you can buy a domain by I think it was one dollar or something near that and then on that domain you will get a free email service which you can then use its SMTP service for sending spoofed emails with the domain that you have specified or you could change the source address like the ones that we want to do here you see here on our GoFish you can change this domain from the domain that you have bought from Namecheap but anyways this topic is really complicated because for example you might send the spoofed email to for example the Google Mail which is called Gmail and Gmail will recognize it as a valid email but at the same time for example Microsoft Outlook will flag it as a, a spam so it really depends on your target and your target company and what email configurations they use in their service but anyways let's have the basics let's know what to do and we will struggle with the details in our projects so you see security-team at signsecurexcompany.com is the from address and in here we could use the remote or let's say online services that I told you or at the same time we can configure our local services for the purpose of this course and also this lecture I'm going to use MailHog so if you come to the MailHog Docker Hub or Hub.Docker you see we have an API based SMTP testing so this is for testing your applications and whether or not they are working with the SMTP service correctly and you can get yeah this docker image so sudo come with me sudo docker login you see these are the logs of openfish and then sudo this docker pull mailhog slash mailhog I have already downloaded this because it takes some time so you pause the video pull the image and come back to me on this lecture okay let's create the instance sudo docker create dash dash name mailhog dash service dash dash i dash it mailhog slash mailhog which is the name of the image and then you see the ports 1025 smtp 8025 http so i want the port let's say 8080 to be forwarded to port let's say 8025 and then i want the port 25 to be forwarded to port 1025 yeah so these are the port forwards and this is the full command sudo docker start mailhog dash service the docker is so sudo docker ps it's up and running let's see http 127.0.0.1 and then port 8080 you see this is the web panel of mailhog so it has nothing only an inbox which shows you if your emails are received or not Also, at the same time, we have 
uh, SMTP service on it. So let's move forward and configure our GoFish to work with this SMTP service. So I want on localhost port 25, which is redirected to port, let's say 1025 was it. And this is the SMTP service of me. We have no usernames and passwords. So there are usernames and passwords in most of the cases, but in here, because we are testing, we don't have any username and passwords. It has a great function here, which tests for the email. So send test email to this victim number one and the email of the victim. So the email of the victim is whatever I say in here because it's a testing environment. So imagine that the email is michael-p at sign securexcompany.com. So we have a typo here. And the position is he is the CEO. So we are sending the social engineering to the CEO. Email sent, and which means the configuration is fine. So regardless of the SMTP service, whether it is public or private on your local system or on your local environment, whenever you see email sent, it means everything is fine. So for example, if yeah, this local has be with double T and we test here, you see there is going to be problem. And you see maximum attempts exceeded and we have a problem here. So this test is real and it is reliable. So let's change this back, save the profile, and let's see what the email is. So you see we have an email from security dash team at sign security X company and it is to victim number one, Michael dash P at sign securexcompany.com and we have the subject of default email from GoFish and we have the rest of the text yeah which is sent by GoFish automatically so we will delete this email and we are good to go